All right, so let's uh, move on and jump into some of the painting functionality. I'm going to expand this. You can see we have uh, some basic layers in here. These are all uh, already uh, visible except for the incandescence. Let's go ahead and turn that on as well. You can see there's some incandescence on the eyes and the horns. And we want to kind of expand on this. So the first thing I would like to point out, which is a feature that was uh, introduced uh, previously, but it's so useful, I just uh, like to talk about it. Uh, if we go to uh, specularity, for example, in here, I can uh, solo select it, of course, and then you see just the specularity. And that specular map is applied to all of the geometries in the scene. So you can see that everything is currently displaying that. Uh, if we go in here and set this to solo as diffuse, then it will display the spec map as a diffuse map. And so simply what I did is I duplicated the diffuse map and then moved it into the spec channel. And then over the um, spec channel, I can go to adjust color and set this to black and white, for example, which will turn it into a black and white channel, a grayscale channel. Uh, I can start to tint this by giving this a little more color, maybe go ahead and exaggerate that, add some points in here. Um, customize the fall off if we want. We can go ahead and tear this off, make this much larger and kind of define what that curve needs to look like. So if I want the spec to be tinted this red, for example, I could do that. And then maybe we go back to a black and white. And if we want to, we can obviously edit any kind of color this way as well. Let's do that for RGMB and let's go ahead and crank up these values kind of like that. Yeah, spread it out a little bit so we get a little bit of an ease in, ease out. Kind of like that and bring a little bit of that value back. So we get a lot more contrast there on the spec. Um, this is something that I might be able to use in here and say, okay, let's um, let's go back to um, all channels. You can see that spec is a little brighter in certain areas right now and so a little more dead, a little more flat in areas where you wouldn't expect it. The other nice thing, by the way, I should point out is if we go to the uh, the, the preference list and under rendering, uh, there's a switch in here now that says optimize monochrome paint layers that optimizes memory to handle monochrome paint layers and you'll see uh, faster behavior in general between uh, using these layers yeah, on on your model. So let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this. Duplicating is something that uh, we've worked on in the last couple of releases as well is to make this faster and more intuitive. And then maybe use this spec layer as a uh, bump layer by just renaming this. Let's say we'll call this Minotaur uh, Bump. And I want to introduce some bump. And I'm going to go ahead and create a bump layer by physically going in here and putting the bump layer in and then we are the bump channel in and now I'm going to grab this layer and drop this into the bump channel that too is much faster this doesn't look all that pretty we can go ahead and delete that um, paint layer one under bump we can now go in here and just kind of dial this down if we want but ideally what I end up with is a normal map so instead of having to extract a normal map off the surface and go through that whole map extraction process by having to go in here and then say normal map setting up a source and a target specifying a resolution etc we could just say right click from over the bump channel and say let's select this normal map from bump. We want to create the tangent space um, normals for this and then we'll say okay there's the normal channel with that map now associated with it. And let's turn off the bump and let's dial down the, the normal intensity to something that is a little more realistic and so now if I look in this area for example over here you can see some of the details that are being hit by the highlights and the spec if I turn that off you can see that we get a, a much better kind of representation of what that surface uh, uh, could look like. This is kind of mushy and uh, soft and introducing that normal information really does help um, accent some of the, the details on that model. Okay so once we have our normal map set up uh, we can start to deal with illumination as well and so if I move the light on the surface you can see that we get proper light interpolation on the surface. The map is responding to the position of the light. Let's go ahead and focus in on this uh, loincloth. I'm going to talk about uh, one of the other channels while we're on channels here uh, related to this model. So let's go ahead and turn this on or off and you can see that this too is also covering that loincloth. There's a lot more detail that kind of gets accentu accentuated by the uh, through the use of that normal map that we have now. 
So let's uh, let's go in and just kind of uh, resize the brush here. I'm going to focus in on this. I want to create a uh, an opacity channel. So let's set this to opacity and uh, 2K is fine for this smaller piece. And there's our uh, opacity channel right there. We'll call this uh, loin cloth, something like that, so I know what it is. And we can start to paint um, some transparency on this surface now. Mind you that the shader assigned to this is the miniature body shader. So it's all the same shader. Uh, this is the cloth object, uh, the node named cloth object. And what I'd like to be able to do is just uh, simply go in here and paint with uh, one of the paint brushes. Let's go ahead and set this to a black value. By the way, this color chooser is the same one that we have in Maya. You can dock it or you can just leave it floating. Let's expand that a little bit. It gives you a uh, section for color palettes, numeric input for HSV and RGB. And then you've got a color wheel that uh, is either a ring, a spectrum, an image, if you want a sample of it and load an image, or just a four corner blend RGB and black. And so let's go ahead and you can see that I can dock it over there. So an opacity of black obviously will give this this. The problem is that we still still have our specular um, being um, affected by light, of course. And so the specular map is not transparent itself. So what I could do is I could just simply find the shader, Minotaur uh, body. Let's go to object, load that, and set this opacity to affect all channels. And so now in this case, no matter how you look at this, it's going to affect every channel the color channel, the opacity channel on our on our model. So let's go back to layers and uh, continue painting that loin cloth uh, layer there. And I'm also going to bring up the fall off editor. Select a solid fall off, so we have something a little more a um, little more of a hard edge. And let's turn off stamps and stencils, so we get something that looks like that. Okay, so let's uh, quickly just kind of lay out where we want transparency and where not. I kind of want to break up that hard edge of the model. Let's go ahead and use a slightly smaller brush. and just kind of paint that out. There we go. Once that's all out, we can go ahead and just drop down in size and really start to kind of define the details in the ragged kind of look of that cloth. Create hard corners and kind of tears inside that kind of get away from the squared look. Now if you want you can go ahead and add a stamp to your brush that is a lot more geometric in shape so you, you generally don't get out of the box round shapes out of your brush. There you go. So maybe that's something that I want. Um, so there's the loin cloth. Let's go back to show all. And uh, at this point we um, can start to talk a little bit about, let's just talk a little bit about painting across multiple objects. So we have multiple objects in the face. We have a scrunchie, we have a nose ring, eyeballs, all different objects on the, the geometry of this character. What I'd like to be able to do is paint across them using a paint brush, actually use a, a projection brush, and use a stencil. So let's go ahead and turn everything off. I'm going to go into my image browser and I'm going to browse for uh, these stencils, these stencils are associated with uh, the build of this character and so you can see that we have a lot of tribal type tattoo material. We have some hand prints kind of like uh, uh, an orc type look from um, you know, some of the orcs you've seen in the past. I'm going to load this as a stencil in the scene and then we can go ahead and kind of position this over the model. Let's get a little closer to the model and then uh, jump into the diffuse channel. I want to create a 4K map here. A little bit higher in resolution, allowing you to pick up some of the detail in the in the hand as far as like the creases and the scratches and that texture. So let's kind of move this over the over the character, increase the size of the brush, and we're going to go ahead and use a. Uh, there we go. We're going to go ahead and use. There we go. That's the map the channel that I want to create that map for of not opacity. I actually accidentally dropped it in opacity. We can go and kind of go ahead and scrub this into the surface. You can see we get all the detail. And that kind of thing works for all your um, brushes. So if I select a paint erase brush for example and rotate the stencil or reposition it or rescale it, I can now go ahead and erase parts of that stencil by having a hand print that erases from the previous one. 
And so that's a quick way to generate some paint that sits on the uh, on the character. Now something else that I could do that's interesting with stencils is the ability to be able to load a stencil and let's say I load a stencil that is the same one but essentially a different color and I'm going to go into projection and maybe move this around a bit just like that and get it positioned over the shoulder maybe he had a hand slapped on his shoulder across multiple geometries again and in this case what I'd like to do is be able to edit the stencils so I can get more mileage out of what I can do with this let's see we can go to edit stencil we can define whether that stencil is displayed in opaque mode in uh, transparent mode or in alpha mode so this is opaque transparent and alpha now if you your model goes uh, completely purple that's just offloading texture so let's go ahead and turn off that switch under preferences called use gigatexel engine and that should ref refresh properly now when I hit the wire you can see that there's a plane that stencil sits on which is kind of nice so if I uh, decide that this is my stencil and it's uh, it's it's done or maybe I want to go back in and edit this because I don't like the the shape we can just simply go in and select one of our sculpt brushes and start to modify what that stencil looks like so let's go ahead and increase the size of that a bit kind of want to move this around and change the proportions of this a bit to create shorter fingers and a larger hand something like that and then maybe I want to go down in here kind of make smaller changes to this so I can customize this however I want. Now if I say done, we can go ahead and turn the wire off and maybe reposition this over the shoulder. Start to rub this new texture onto the surface. You can see that we're going right across uh, some of the um, geometries that are in the scene that are on this character. And so once we're done with that, we can turn that stencil off and you can see we get a totally new effect.